First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. You know, a worldly sort of saying would say this, you get like the company you keep, that's exactly right. That's what this verse is basically saying. Now this leads you into Christians, to believers, but it's true of all of us. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God, I speak this to your shame. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened or not made alive, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but their grain, if it by chance of wheat, or some other grain, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. One star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is so in a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit, or a life-giving spirit. So about the Lord Jesus Christ here. He's a life-giving spirit. Albeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earth, that is added. The second man is the Lord from heaven, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And as, uh, as, as is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. And again, you speak to Christians here, speak to believers. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, that is, the believers shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of sin, uh, death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, 
for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That's why I seek to keep on going and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, knowing that the gospel of Jesus Christ, or the Lord Jesus Christ, is the only way to heaven. There's absolutely no other way to get to heaven apart from putting your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Will you do that this hour? Realize your sinful condition before the Lord and admit that to God, which is repentance, a change of mind, agree with God that you're a sinner, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. You'll have forgiveness for your sins, peace with God, everlasting life in heaven the moment you die. I mean, we have that everlasting life now as we live on this earth, but what I'm saying is we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We call it the rapture of the church. That is a message for Christians. It's a, it's a message of comfort for the believers that we're going to be taken out of this sin-cursed world, this wicked world, and be united to the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven as the bride of Christ. What a wonderful day that will be. What will you be left behind? To go through the tribulation period of not earth? No, I knew that. But then eventually to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ who could have been your saviour and in that day will be your judge. Don't let that be you. The Lord Jesus Christ wants to be your saviour. He doesn't want to be your judge. But he has no choice if you don't put your faith in him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's ever and eternally too late. Remember, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that if you're interested in this. Look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great night.